let's try assigning RNS to this molecule. Let's try to use the same notation we were just talking about. So this is our center, right? Good. Yes, yeah, so we should put in the asterisk to show the stereocenter. And you put in four dots, that's good. the dotted atoms, we've got an oxygen compared to three carbons. Well, oxygen is better. So we don't make a list over here. Yeah. You only need to make the list if you've got a tie. Well, there's no tie here, so the, and um, there's no list to make. We just automatically say this is number one. Good. And then um, we have a tie here, so we go to the second attachment, which would make this number two. Yeah, the second oxygen beats this hydrogen down here, so this would be number two. And this group is four. Right. And it looks like you've worked out what to do with triple bonds. With the triple bond, you simply list the atom you're connected to three times. So that's us. This is a good example of why you always want to look for the first point of difference. For example, if you were in a hurry, you might have thought that this is the number one priority because it's got two oxygens. Yeah. And this only has one oxygen. But you get to this oxygen first. And this oxygen is directly connected to the stereocenter. And here we didn't get to these oxygens until we'd already passed the carbon. So by the time that this carbon got to play these oxygens, so to speak, it had already lost to this oxygen over here. So that's one good reason to actually put in the dots to see which atoms you're directly comparing. Um, we're not comparing this oxygen to these two oxygens. We're comparing it to this carbon. So this was number one. All right, so now we've seen how to deal with uh, multiple bonds here as well, and we've seen some good notation. And now we can decide whether this is R or S. S. And how did you work that out? Okay. Now, before you can do that, remember that you, the, the only way you can easily assign R and S is if the number four priority is pointing away from you. Well, is the number four priority pointing away from us in this molecule? I have no idea because it looks flat. Ah, so it looks like maybe you don't remember how to interpret Fisher diagrams. Fisher diagrams. Oh, it's not because it's not down. Okay. All right, it looks like you do remember how to interpret yeah, Fisher I didn't diagrams. Good. It. But yes. Okay. So I need to cross out the one and the four, right? So we have to make a swap. How can we decide who to swap the number four with? Oh, with the one that is facing out. Yeah. Let's go through that. That sounds right. So the only time it's easy to assign R and S is if, if the number four priority is pointing away from us. So the first thing we have to check is, is the number four pointing away from us? Well, here we can see it's not. How, how are you supposed to know this was a Fisher diagram, even though I didn't tell you? Because it's built around this structure. When you see this structure, um, and because otherwise it would be impossible to assign R and S because there's no wedges and dashes. If you just see four bonds here, and you see four bonds like this, this does not mean they're all on the plane of the page, because that could not be tetrahedral. Uh, it must mean it's a Fisher diagram. And it looks like you've remembered that the horizontal line is pointing towards you. You can think of the horizontal line, it's like it was a bow tie. So that's the one that's pointing towards us. All right, now your first instinct, I think, was to swap these two, but that won't help us, because the number four still would not be pointing away from us. I saw that's that right. When I did that, yeah. We gotta swap the number four so it is pointing away from us, which means you can either swap this pair, or you can swap this pair. So you can swap the four and the two, or the four and the three, whichever you like. 
I think you swapped the four and the two? Four and the three. Oh, you did. Okay, so. And again, we don't need to redraw the whole picture. We can just swap the numbers. So we've swapped these numbers. And now we have a new molecule where it's easy to assign R and S because the number four is pointing away from us. Uh, so now we simply look at the configuration of one, two, and three. And the configuration of this molecule where the number four is pointing away from us would be S. However, we wanted to know the configuration before we made the swap. Well, to have the single swap rule, that must have the opposite configuration, which is R. So you can see we really are using the same notation here that we used in the previous cases. This method really does work for either normal diagrams or Fisher projections. And if you take your time with uh, all, all that notation, uh, it becomes a fairly mechanical process that we should be able to, uh, to get these right. So I'm um, looking at the uh, handout again. Here we are on page two. Yeah, so here's how to determine R or S. Well, there's an easy case or a hard case. The easy case is when the priority four group is already pointing into the page. Then you just look at one, two, and three and decide whether they're clockwise or counterclockwise, and that's it. But if the number four is pointing out of or in the plane of the page, first you've got to swap the number four so it's pointing into the page. Then you figure out what the new configuration would be with the number four pointing away from you. And then step three, you know the configuration of the original molecule um, must be the opposite because the new molecule you made a single swap to get to that. So that's uh, this method at the bottom of page two. All right, but well, that would definitely be a good thing to practice because like you said, you are likely to see that on the exam yeah. and there's no reason why you can't get these problems uh, right. These are problems that have a definite method for attacking them. I have a whole um, huge video series on uh, RNS2, so if you want some more practice on that, you can take a look at that. Okay. Okay. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.